So you've got a lot of super shady stem cell clinics promising you the world. The question is, are we ever going to have legit stem cell therapies for neurological diseases such as Parkinson's? I can tell you that this is one of the hottest topics in stem cell research right now. A really prominent company just announced that their cell therapy for Parkinson's is entering phase three clinical trials. That's the last stop. If you do well in phase three, you're releasing the drug. And they're just one of many, many, many players in this space. Now, before I start naming names, I just want to make sure everybody knows I'm not sponsored by or affiliated with any of these companies. So the team that's entering phase three, that's Blue Rock Therapeutics. They're using embryonic stem cell derived dopamine neuron precursors. And the idea here is that you don't just want to dump a raw stem cell into the brain, okay? That's asking for a tumor. Instead, you want a progenitor cell, which is an X stem cell that's picked a career path. It knows what it wants to be when it grows up, but the cell isn't fully mature yet. Now in Parkinson's disease, it's your dopamine neurons that are dying off. So you're sending in a group of X stem cells that'll become dopamine neurons when they fully mature. The doctors will inject these dopamine precursor cells into strategic locations in the brain, namely the putamen. Now when you're in school and you're learning about Parkinson's disease, or even if you're just Googling it, Usually the part of the brain that comes up is called the substantia nigra. But the putamen also loses dopamine neurons in Parkinson's disease patients, and it's directly linked to motor control, so it's a good structure to target. Is this protocol optimized? Are we targeting the best structure? Are we delivering the best doses? We don't know. That's the point of the clinical trials. The vast majority of teams are employing this approach. The main difference between teams is where those stem cells come from. So I mentioned that Blue Rock is going with an embryonic stem cell. Other teams like Aspen Neuroscience are using an induced pluripotent stem cell instead. Embryonic stem cells come from embryos. Pretty self-explanatory. Induced pluripotent stem cells you can actually make from your own skin. So you'll collect a skin sample from your patient, take it to the lab. In a dish, you'll do some chemical magic to convert those skin cells into stem cells. And then from there, you can turn them into almost anything that you want to, almost anything. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, Parkinson's disease has a genetic component. So would it really make sense to take patient's own cells to replace the ones that are lost? Might those just end up dying off anyway? We don't really know, it's too early to say. But even using this model as a proof of principle, what you could then do is take some skin cells from the patient reprogram them into stem cells at the lab. And then at the same time, you could also edit the genes that are problematic. But of course, step one needs to be to figure out whether or not this whole idea of dopamine cell replacement or Parkinson's disease, whether or not that's feasible, whether or not it's safe. Before you have that basic information, you really shouldn't get that fancy. But what's the difference between these two sources? Who cares if you're getting the stem cells from embryos or if you're getting it from your own skin cells? Of course, there are the controversial elements related to ethics. That aside, there's actually a biological argument for one over the other as well. Doctors usually won't use immunosuppressants for a patient who's receiving induced pluripotent stem cells derived from their own bodies. That is a huge advantage over embryonic stem cells. With embryonic stem cells, because it's coming from a donor source, so it's not coming from your own body, it's coming from somebody else, that means you need to take immunosuppressants. Otherwise, your body could reject the cells altogether, your immune system could start attacking the cells, and that could cause a lot of serious health problems for you as the patient. But then even when you do take immunosuppressants, there are risks associated with those drugs. Now you're a lot more susceptible to infections. I was just reading about a case report of a patient dying in a clinical trial, not because of the stem cell therapy that they were receiving, but because of the immunosuppressants that they were taking, the patient ended up getting an infection and unfortunately they passed away. That's not to say that all immunosuppressants are bad. Plenty of people take them without any issues. I'm just saying that there are risks associated with the use of immunosuppressants. And if you can get around it, that'd be ideal. Now, there are a few options in between embryonic stem cells and induced pluripotent stem cells directly from the patient. So for example, there are induced pluripotent stem cells from a donor. So that means that you can have a ready to go off the shelf therapy. However, because it's not from the patient themselves and it's coming from somebody else, they would still need to use immunosuppressants just to avoid that tissue rejection scenario that I described earlier. So with that solution, you can kind of get around the controversy surrounding embryonic stem cells. And you could also enhance the efficiency of the entire operation 
but you know, there are pros and cons to all of these solutions. We're also seeing published data indicating that these treatments are safe. That's primarily what we're looking for in phase one trials and early phase two trials. In later phase two trials moving into phase three, that's when you start to get a real window into efficacy. Is this drug actually going to work as well as being safe? Because just being safe is great, but it's, you know, it's not enough. So with Blue Rocks trials, for example, we have hints of efficacy, but we're not far enough advanced through the clinical trial pipeline to really know for sure. I think that's why a lot of us are really, really looking forward to this next phase of data, moving into phase three, to see whether or not the drug is actually working. And as you move through the pipeline, your sample sizes start to get larger and larger and larger, and that really helps you to judge whether or not the drug is working. We are starting to hear positive patient testimonials. You know, a patient will participate in a clinical trial, will experience whatever result it is that they do, and then perhaps they'll talk to the media about it. Now these ends of one are reason for cautious optimism, to be sure, but an end of one is not enough. That's why it's better to wait for all of the results to come in before you make a judgment call. So I've already mentioned Aspen Neuroscience and Blue Rock Therapeutics. There's also a team in Japan that's working on this. It's actually at the research institute that was founded by the guy who invented induced pluripotent stem cells. So that's a pretty big player. And then you also have teams in Switzerland and the UK that are working together and they're making waves in their uh, STEM PD trial. Just know that this is a non-exhaustive list. So there are other teams all over the world working on this particular application, including a team at Harvard. You are now up to date on stem cell therapies for Parkinson's. If you learned something, share this video with a friend.